Well, another news, Tehillit is an ancient blue dye that makes the color of the string that many Jews wear as part of their tzitzit and talit. A new book explores the history of that dye, which author Baruch Stearman told IBA's Ellie Wagelanter is the only mitzvah that was lost to history and then found again. Let's listen. 150 years, people have tried to rediscover it, both Jewish scholars, rabbis, Hasidic rebbies, as well as chemists, archaeologists, marine biologists. And uh, we think, at least according to this story, which is still unfolding today, we think that we have uh, gotten to the bottom of what it was and uh, which marine creatures were uh, responsible for this dye. We actually see this all the time, people wearing this tzitzit outside, and you see the blue thread that is obviously being made from this blue dye. Yeah. There are, well, there are two types of tzitzit around today. One was discovered or uh, uh, brought brought back, uh, if you will, by the Radzina Rebbe about 150 years ago. He was a rabbi in Poland, and he believed that he had found this ancient source of the biblical blue dye, a cuttlefish, a type of squid. Uh, most people... Which are not kosher. Well, you know what? Yes, they're, they're not kosher, but, uh, uh, but he didn't have a problem with that. He uh, uh, believed that this, uh, that this uh, squid or cuttlefish was the source, the chilazon, the source of the ancient dye. Uh, most religious authorities, as well as the secular world, disagreed. They believed it came from a shellfish, some kind of a marine snail. Rabbi Herzog, Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog, the first chief rabbi of Israel, actually did a doctorate on the topic in 1914 and disproved the Radziner's Tchelet and suggested that it came from a snail. And the snail, that was the problem, because the snails that were around in those days, at least what we knew of or what Herzog knew of, only produced a purple dye. And Rabbi Herzog maintained it had to be sky blue, trelet. So there are really two types of trelet around today. One is radziner trelet, which some Hasidim still wear, and the other is the snail-based blue dye, which has only been around for less than 20 years. So anything that you see today amongst all the people who are wearing on their, on their prayer shawls these uh, blue threads, Pretty much all of that is less than 20 years, 20 years old. As, as the author of this book, the scholar on this issue, who would you say is right? Well, we actually are uh, very much convinced that the sea snail called the Murex trunculus, our little uh, hero of the book, that is the ancient chilazon and the source of the blue dye. Uh, we, I think that we can prove that more or less uh, you know, conclusively in the book. There's all kinds of evidence that comes from cuneiform tablets and through chemical analysis and high-performance liquid chromatography and everything else you could possibly imagine. We go through all of that uh, uh, in, our, in, in the book. And, um, and we do believe that today, after 1,300 years of being lost, Jews around the world can actually put on the strings of Tchelet, the authentic blue strings of Tchelet, once again on their prayer shawls. From a perspective of Jewish law, would they not be required to do so? The, the issues that are brought up by Tchelet with respect to Jewish law are fascinating because this is the only commandment ever to have been completely lost to the Jewish people that now has the at least the potential. opportunity and potential to be reinstated. And as such, it pushes halacha, Jewish law, to an extreme position that it never had to deal with before. People theoretically could have wondered, well, what's more important, authenticity or tradition? Now, in some ways, they're forced to choose. And it's a very, very interesting discussion is going on between the highest level of, uh, of rabbinic uh, authorities today. And there are people that are coming down on both sides. There are those who say you should wear it, those who say you must wear it, those who say you are allowed to wear it, and those who say you should not, should not wear, wear it. it. How, how is that going to be decided? Interesting question. Uh, I would say that like, uh, uh, like the threads that were meant to be placed on the prayer shawls of every single Jew, this is a very democratic mitzvah. It's a very democratic commandment. And probably what the people, what the Jewish people decide to do will determine what the rabbis eventually adopt.